Hello again. You'll remember that very early on in this series of lectures, we said that there were three topics which were considered to be the big three of computer security. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Well, we've talked at some length about confidentiality and availability. Let's talk a little bit about availability. Right, so what is availability? It's just assuring that the resources that you need are available, are there when you need to use them. So an attack on availability is called a denial of service attack, an availability attack, or in many cases a distributed denial of service attack, which is very common these days. That's uh, when you have a, a number of computers or just distributed system attacking the availability of some resource. Okay, so many people have looked at this problem. One of them, uh, David Gristy from a university in Liverpool, has characterized the problem as having two major components. It's what he calls the consumer problem and the producer problem. And it's just a, a, a way of looking at, at this problem of somebody preventing you from getting a hold of a resource that you need when you need it. So looking at it from the consumer point of view, you know, if you think about this as a uh, client server system, you've got some service which the server has provided and a bunch of clients out there. If, if somehow you can block the clients from sending requests to the server, that's the consumer problem as Gresty describes it. And then the producer problem, which is actually more common, is for somebody to attack the server typically by overwhelming it, by sending it a number of, of illegitimate requests and, and filling up its resources or consuming its resources to prevent legitimate clients from accessing them. Okay, so we won't worry too much about the consumer attacks, but let's think about the producer attacks, how this typically happens. Well, usually, and this is often what's meant by a distributed denial of service attack, uh, a number of computers, one or a number of computers, might send illegitimate requests to the server uh, and basically overwhelm its capabilities so that the server can't then respond to legitimate attacks. Uh, this transaction may happen in a number of ways, uh, and we'll talk about a particular one called send flooding. Send flooding is uh, relying on the properties of a particular protocol. Okay. So that, that protocol is what's called the TCP three-way handshake. This is the way TCP connections are, are established on the internet, say. And almost everything that happens on the internet happens via TCP, so this is a very important protocol. Right. But when you want to establish a connection between a server and a client or between two, two entities on the internet, the way that happens is uh, in, with a particular protocol, the client sends a message to the server, uh, and this is called a send message because there's a particular flag in the TCP packet called the synchronization flag, which is set. What happens then is that the client uh, says, hey, this guy wants to talk to me. It establishes, uh, it, it, or it fills in a bunch, of, a bunch of information in an internal table, and this is called a half-open connection, and then it sends back to the client uh, a packet which is called a SYNAC packet because it's got the synchronize and the acknowledgement flag set. And then it sits and waits. Uh, and then in, in the ideal situation, the client sends back to the server a final acknowledgement message that says, hey, I'm ready to go. And at that point, both the, the client and the server have know about the parameters of the transaction and then they can send messages back and forth. Okay, so what happens in the send flooding attack is that an attacker sends the synchronization packets to the server and they have forged or illegitimate return addresses. And so the server allocates the space in its, um, in its ta internal table for these connections and then sends back the appropriate response. But since the, uh, since the return address is illegitimate, they go, they go off somewhere. We don't know where. Uh, and then it sits and waits. Eventually this times out and it throws those away. But in the meanwhile, you've got these half open connections as these are called, uh, filling up the server's table. And if you have enough of them, there's not room for legitimate clients to make a TCP connection. And so this is what's called a send flooding attack. Okay, 
Well, how might you deal with this? I guess there are a number of ways you might. You could increase the size of the server's internal table. The problem with this is that each one of these uh, half-open connections takes maybe 600 bytes of storage. And so there's a, there's a limit to how much you can do this. And besides, if you increase the table, then the attacker can just send more requests. So that's, a, that's not a legitimate uh, answer to the problem. You could shorten the timeout period to mean that the half-open connections sit for a shorter time in the table. The problem with that is then that in itself is a denial of service attack because slower clients may be disadvantaged because they'll time out before they can ever complete the handshake. Uh, you could try to filter suspicious packets. That is, if anything doesn't look legitimate, you can throw it away. That's a hard thing to do because how do you know when a, when a packet is really legitimate or not? If all you can do is look at the return address, that's not enough information. And so if you're too aggressive about doing this, that in itself may be a denial of service attack because you may throw away or legitimate traffic. Finally, you could change the algorithm. And that, in fact, was the solution to send flooding. So the way the algorithm was redesigned is that when the server receives a send packet, instead of allocating space in its table at that time, it packages up that information and sends it back to the client along with the SIN acknowledgement message. And then it goes on merrily about its way, uh, and, and it only establishes that space in the table. If it then gets a, a corresponding synchronization, or excuse me, acknowledgement message back from the client. And this, this really solves the problem. Okay, so what have we said? Well, availability is an important aspect of computer security on a par with confidentiality and integrity. Um, availability attacks are often called denial of service attacks, and actually many of the attacks that you read about in the media are denial of service attacks. The attacker can either block traffic from the clients, that's called the consumer problem, or it can try to dis disable or disadvantage the server, that's called the, the uh, consumer problem, or excuse me, the producer problem. Uh, and we've looked at a particular kind of attack called send flooding, and that's a classic denial of service attack. Thank you.